Hey guys, the uh, weekend before last, I did a class on flyback splits. Uh, today, I had a gentleman messaging me about how to cut queen cells off of plastic foundation. Could I do a video on that, please? So, that made me remember that I had done the flyback splits, because I had forgotten. Um, so, the weather is not good. Uh, it's been raining. It's a break in the rain right now. It's very overcast, but hopefully we will have some queen cells in here and I can demonstrate a couple things to you. So this was this was the queen right portion. Now, unfortunately, we've had a cold spell and during that little cold snap, things have of course, um, slowed down quite a bit with the nectar and with the bees. You can see the population in here. This was one frame with the queen on it. So this is what flew back home to her. This was their original spot. This was a... Uh, this was a double deep. I'm going to pause that for a second and tell you what I do with this. If they start making it wonky, it comes off. It comes off and we get to try again. Now, as I was saying, this was a double deep hive. We found, we first moved it over, set a new bottom board down. Set a new bottom board down, set an empty deep, broke this hive apart so that we wouldn't chase the queen between the two deeps. We checked one deep, we didn't find the queen, we checked the other deep, we found the queen. We took the queen and the frame that she was laying on and we put it in this empty box. And we gave her one frame, I think, we might have gave her two frames of brood altogether. Uh, but she had that, there's a little food in there breast foundation and that was it we didn't shake any bees we didn't worry about it because there wasn't very much brood in there that would need a high, a high population to take care of all the foraging force the field force will leave this box now and when it goes out and flies it's going to come back to her so it may take a couple hours or what have you but eventually you're going to have a decent population in this box and you're going to have curbed her uh, her swarm impulse. So let's see how they look. Now again, these bees they're not going to be happy with me, and that's okay, because this is not an acceptable time to be fooling with them. But they've drawn this frame completely out, and she has laid it up full of eggs. You may have to use your zoom because uh, I'm behind here, but. They've done a pretty good job on that while the nectar was still going, but it just, somebody shut shut the faucet off. So, uh, this cool temperatures stalled them out. Okay, they drew this one out as well, and she laid it up. Um, it had a slight bow in it, and they've ignored that for whatever reason, but uh, we'll just space it out a little bit and see what we get. So they, they really go to town on the foundation. And of course they know it's raining, it's bad weather, and they don't want their hive exposed like this. So y'all forgive my bees, they don't mean it. Here are the queen, she's took right back off. Just caught a gear knowing she's got to... Uh, repopulate this hive and that's a big slab of brood we'll leave a little gap there a little more smoke just because I want y'all to be able to hear me and not hear buzzing all over my head so she's she's laying up everything recovering well all these bees in here are field force. 
they were foragers and they reverted back to whatever jobs that they needed to do. Now that's a big fat honey frame. We're going to move this offside back to the brood. We're going to leave these alone. Because we were just showing you what was going on here anyway. Now we'll smoke. Now guys, typically you want to do this 10 days after you do your flyback split. 10 days. Um, I don't have my calendar and I, I don't know exactly how many days it's been. Probably, if I had to guess, too many. So I knocked the bees off because I don't want to crush them. I'm going to set it right here because I don't want to have to take their lid back off. I'm going to separate this medium. There's no queen in here, but just so that I can go back and forth and demonstrating to you guys. Now, this wasn't a really strong hive, but strong enough. So I already see a few queen cells. This one here is being thinned out. So let's come around here to where the bees are and really want to get upset with me. Let's see. I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. I'm going to cut a circle. Now this is a little cell, but we're demonstrating here. So I've scored a circle around this cell. I'm going to get in under it. I'm going to gently prize it away. Now, the bees will fix that. As you can see, that cell is fine. It's not exposed. This one's open. I'll leave it there just for now for the time being. We'll set that there. Looks like I mashed a cell, so get rid of that. I believe, um, I don't know who used to sell these, but there was a company that were selling these spiral wire queen cell cages a while back. You can't find them in the U.S. anymore that I could tell. I did find some European manufacturers. But shipping and all, uh, it really isn't cost effective. Uh, my friend Anura at Pierce Beekeeping, I was talking to him about these and he made up a batch of them. So this was his prototype and I think he's pretty spot on with it. It comes with a little, little punched out metal piece to cover the top. And what you do, You'll clean the proud comb there, and you're going to put this cell in here. All that honey's making it a little sticky on me. But this cell, it's going to face downward. We're going to get it to where it faces down so the queen can crawl out. And we place this cover so they can't come drag her out the top as so set that here then as you're making your splits up guys this cell protector, it goes wherever you want to put it. You just punch it right through. If you feel like that wire on the back's too long, just snip it off. Make it sharp, whatever. Um, but it'll go through your older comb, wherever you want it to go. Anyway, it's a very nice cell protector. 
they work great they last forever i have a very old one that i demonstrated in one of my videos before that i keep up on my shelf as a keepsake uh but they're really cool so you want to if you want any of these hit anura up at pierce beekeeping uh he'll probably list them on his website if there's any interest in them um i think they're a great tool to have So back to back to the split. Let me get where you guys can see me here. Now this medium, I need it for a mating nuke project. So I'm going to clear all the cells out of it. And shake the bees into a nuke box and uh, just kind of claim it for a future project. I don't want them, I don't want the cell that's in here. But if you were doing this, of course, you would just use the cell. So we'll make sure we're going to cut these cells off because I have some, I have some cooking across the street. And my cell builders from a very good breeder hive. So that's what I want. This queen, she's not a bad queen. She's doing a good job, but she is not the best of the best. And that's what matters. You guys see, there's a decent cell right there. Luckily, it's, it's kind of proud. So it's very easy just to get your hive tool in there. Prize it off. And as you do this, you you take these extra cells off. You put them wherever you need them in the split. As I said, this is going to uh, go sit on top of a T-post here. When the weather's a little nicer. We'll just take what I want out of this here. Uh, this was a being used as a honey super. Lord, the propolis is rough when it's a little cooler. Shake the bees. Move this out of the way. When you shake bees off a frame, you want to give them a hard jolt and a hard stop. And they plop right off. Don't hurt them a bit. Okay. Now... Since it's raining, I know my pen ain't going to want to write. Scratch this, line, medium. Now I got a little bit of bees in this box. Nice thing about a gesture box, when you need to shake bees that way, you don't shake them off the side. Open your lid up, box fits right over there, just like that, no problem. Then I got all these extra bees to put in there. This one is no cells, hopelessly queenless. They can't do anything else. And well, I hope that they're hopelessly queenless because you guys probably saw me place a queen cell on a top bar that I pried off. And I don't know where it is now. Probably fell off somewhere, but I'll check for it. You never know. When they're desperate enough, guys, um, if you drop a cell, they'll fix it. They'll do whatever they can if that's their chance at life. So they're going to do what they need to do for it. Now, the weather, like I said, is not great, but this was a good opportunity for me to make the best of it and 
It's not often that I have a chance to demonstrate the cells this way for you guys. Because I usually use my grafted cells. So, let's see what's on the end here. A lot of hatched out brood. You can see where the hatch out was. The remnant of the cap cells around. So, this is all freshly emerged with um, some nectar on the side. So these are all younger bees. I probably waited just a little bit long, but uh, so as you can see, this one has a cell right here, and I think you guys can see me. This is plastic foundation. So you you want to imagine a keyhole. And the top of the keyhole is circular, and the cell is the bottom part that is elongated. So that's what you want to keep in mind. Now, don't worry about cutting any of this brood around it. That's no big deal. You're, you're going to have to because this queen cell is more important than this brood. So start about a half inch up above it and score it down to the plastic. And then just come in under it. Of course, you got all that milky, milky. And then gently get up under it that way. Whatever you got to do, turn it around, work it other ways. But you're just going to work it free. You're going to work it free. And you see all the cell structure behind it from the previous cells. You're good. If you're very delicate with your removal, you can remove... A lot of unnecessary things off of it just got to have a tender touch right right there I peeled it open oops no big deal fold it back over because these larvae are, are well they're pupa now they're not larva they're they're older and they'll be fine so I just fold that back over and that cell could be used could be used in the uh, and the splits as you go and divide it up. Generally, you're going to want to put uh, two frames of brood and a frame of food or what have you um, in there. Here we got another one. Not amazing cells, but decent enough. So. I don't need these cells, so let's open it up and see how advanced they are. Oh, pretty advanced. Probably, you know, 10 or 12. They haven't developed their wings yet, but she was pretty far along. But not that close. I need to make sure there's no cells hiding where they won't accept my my cells from my breeder queen over there. <clears throat> Here's another one, another one. So generally they're going to make you enough cells with this flyback split that you can make several several divisions with it. Uh, a lot of times, if they're really heavy with bees, they'll make more than you'll need and be able to divide up in this colony, and you'd be able to use those in other colonies. Say if you had one that you wanted to propagate more than this one, um, you would be able to use those cells and just cut these down. This one is thinned on the end, uh, which makes me think it's getting a little older. So let's... Okay, it's about the same age as the other. But there's the one cell there. Say we were going to keep it, we'd just set it over here to the side. I should have a hundred and plus cells over there. I grafted a hundred and twenty, so you can see a little propolis everywhere here. None on this frame. Um, 
but there'll be a good amount of bees still emerging out of this sealed brood so that's a good one don't forget if you're reusing these jester boxes to close your lid or not lid but your entrance because you end up losing a lot of population end up at the gas station wondering where all the bees are coming from so fair amount of bees again I'm just making these up as uh, mating nukes it's really going to depend uh, how many nukes and things that you get out as to how strong this hive was Again, the parent hive is looking great. We'll give them food frame. You got to be careful looking through these honey frames though too. Because sometimes they'll sneak a cell in on you. Like right there. So basically, I'm going to have had um, three splits here off of off of the original. It wasn't a very strong hive, guys. Like I said, um, and not not great. I let it run a little bit long, you know, but. We're going to uh, just completely remove it. Now, if this were in your bee yard, you would leave one of your splits in here because you're going to have some returning foragers to this portion. But I don't want this many hives right here. This is my classroom area. I really only like to have around three or so here. So I'm going to shake the rest of these bees into this weaker box set this equipment out of my way There you have it. We'll slide mama back over a little bit. Some food for the birds. And that was that. Now, let me move, move my splits off here. Pretty sure I split two hives. I think I split this one as well, guys. Let's get a better view. Move my tools. All right, so let's see. Did I split this? I don't know. I should have wrote my notes, but I think I'm going to have to cut it short, guys, because uh, the rain is picking up. Yeah, I did. I did. I got some cells right there. So I'll do the same thing with this one. And we'll keep this one, uh, this video semi short. If you have any questions about what I did here, uh, about removing cells, about the cell protectors, flyback splits, any of that, uh, check out my other videos and leave me a comment and I'll get back with you on it.
Thanks, guys.